Hi everyone, Wacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again and I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Most mid-range and high-range audio interfaces come with at least eight in channel inputs and two, four or maybe up to eight channel outputs that you can utilize to capture your audio for recording purposes and at the same time have multiple outputs to drive your monitors or maybe even headphone outputs uh, for recording to present it to the band and so on. But what if you actually need more microphone inputs? What if you have a situation where you want to record and mic a drum set fully so that um, eight inputs are no longer enough? You know, in situations where you want to mic up the drum with two microphone at least to the kick drum so you've got inside the inside the kick drum and one outside, the snare, the hi-hats, um, the cymbals, the toms, um, and so on. So you may require more than eight. But what if you're recording a live band and you need more microphones because you want to mic up, you know, at least four or five microphones to the drum. Then you've got the bass guitar, the rhythm guitars, the, the keys, the vocalist and background vocals. Maybe eight inputs are not enough. To allow additional inputs, most of those mid-range and high-range audio interfaces do come up with an interface called ADAT, which is a fiber optic connection between two gears to allow additional eight inputs, sometimes even more. Examples would be the Behringer's ADA8000 or the 8200, which allow to have additional eight microphones and eight line outputs that connect to your existing audio interface so you can have 16 inputs and maybe up to 8 or up to 16 outputs that you can direct use. Or there's also the, um, the Personas uh, Digimax 88, you know, which does the same thing. Now, you may have to go and purchase one, but what if you already have another audio interface that has an ADAT input? You'll be able to use two audio interfaces connected via USB to your laptop or to your computer and be able to utilize the eight inputs and the outputs from each device giving you maybe 16 audio interfaces. That is fine, the connections will work, but there's one problem. Most DAWs will only allow to communicate and talk with one physical audio interface. So you cannot actually record let's assume 16 channel inputs simultaneously all at the same time. So how do we go about it? Without spending any extra money to purchase additional A to D converters. So in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how I'm gonna use my Personas uh, AudioBox 1818 VSL, which is a eight channel input and eight channel output. Um, and at the same time, my Behringer Firepower FCA1616, which is again, eight channel input and eight channel output, to combine them together so that it looks as one device to my DAW. In this case, my choice would be, I'm gonna demonstrate in a couple of them, like in Personas Studio One Pro, as well as in Traction T5, the free DAW. You can have 16 inputs, so you can record all 16 tracks all at the same time. Now there's a program called ASIO for All, which is a driver software that is freely available for you to download. You just go to uh, www.asioforall.com and you can download and install it on your uh, PC or laptop. And that will allow you to select and combine or aggregate multiple physical devices and make it look like a one device to the AW of your choice. So basically it will get all of the data coming from your USB connections of your uh, uh, audio interfaces and combine them together as one 16 input device, which is fantastic. That means um, you can use any DAW to have 
and capture 16 inputs simultaneously at the same time. Then again, we come up with another issue. Now, each device will have its own internal clock for its sampling rate. And then, depending what the sample rate we select, whether it's 44.1 or 48 or 88 kilohertz and so on, um, and they use the internal clock to sample the incoming audio to convert it into digital data stream to send it to our PC. Now, if we have two devices, each having their own clock inside, any drift between those clocks, because those clocks are not atomic clocks, so they're not precise, they will drift. So even though they're very close and precise, they will drift. So that drift between two devices will cause ASIO for all to have some issues. Issues of data loss because they're not synchronized. You know, each clock is coming at different rate. Even very slightly, it's coming at different rate. So that will cause data corruption and then your audio recording will actually start um, degrading and then eventually you won't hear other than some howling noise coming in you know from your you know 16 inputs so as they get out of sync it'll cause a problem initially maybe the first few minutes or so maybe sometimes five minutes it might be fine but once they start getting out of sync you lose that synchronization and then it's unworkable so in this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to go about synchronizing those two devices together. So it doesn't matter how long you are recording, those two devices will be in sync together. So the data flowing to your laptop via the USB is in sync and not corrupted. So without any further ado, let's get onto my desktop and I will do some slideshow and talk about how we achieve this synchronization between the two devices and use what we already have um, as far as gear without spending any more money buying new gear to have up to 16 inputs and you know 16 outputs in this case um, without spending any further money so let's get on in this presentation I'm gonna demonstrate how I'm gonna use ASIO for all the Windows ASIO driver to combine the two audio interfaces into one. Let's talk about some of the issues we can have by just trying to join the two devices together. Now, each device uses its own built-in clock for its audio sampling rate for the analog to digital conversion. But when we join the two devices together as one, and if we leave each device to use its own internal clock, now any shift in that clock in any one of the devices will actually cause issues in the A to D conversion, analog to digital conversion. And this can actually cause a major audio distortion problem because they go out of sync and they start shifting. So it, it won't be possible to record a clean audio or any audio at all, because it will actually start cutting off. So what's the workaround? Well, what we need to do is we need to make a synchronization connection between the two devices. And one of the easy way that I have found is the ADAT input and output connection. And this will enable one device to be the master clock and the second one as the slave. We will have a look at some examples very soon so you can better understand what we are trying to achieve. So here in this example, I have my Personas Audiobox 1818 VSL at the top, and at the bottom, I have my Behringer Firepower FCA 1616 audio interface. They are obviously connected to my PC or my laptop using the USB connection, and drivers have been installed for each one of those devices. If I actually run my DAW, which is Presonus Studio One, or any DAW of your choice, you will only be able to select either of these devices. You cannot select them both. So I will show you how we can join them together. But as with our issue of the clock synchronization, what we need to do is connect our ADAT 
cable connection between the output of the Presonus Studio One into the input of the FCA 1616. And the cable that we need to use is the ADAT light pipe cable, which look similar to this. And there's some variations, but the end connection looks exactly the same. This so that to synchronize the device clocks to each other to avoid any audio sampling clock drift issues. So we basically connect the output of the audio box 1818 VSL into the input of the Firepower FCA 1616 using the ADAT light pipe cable. The next step is to set who is going to be the master and who is going to be the slave. In this example, I've decided my AudioBox 1818 VSL to be the master. In the setup of the VS 1818 VSL driver, I, as you can see indicated with the arrows, my clock source is the internal clock. And I'm using for simplicity the ASIO sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. If your BERT devices support higher rate, like 48 kilohertz, then I would recommend to, suggest, uh, to select that one. But you need to make sure that you, the sampling rate of the clock are matched between the two devices. Here I'm demonstrating how I'm selecting the FCA1616 USB control panels, the sampling rate, and notice the clock source. It says optical input. So the Behringer FCA1616, instead of using its own internal clock for the sampling, it will use the clock from the optical input that it receives. This way, the data that being sent from each of the device have the same clock. So when the data arrives um, from the two USB connections, into our laptop, they are from the same clock coming from my AudioBox 1818 VSL. So once we have that organized, the next step is to get our DAW running. Here in this example, uh, first example, I'm showing you how I set up in Presonus Studio One and in the audio setup and selecting the audio device, I'm selecting Azure for All version 2. By clicking the control panel, we are able to see the Azure for All control panel. The Azure for All will detect all of your audio interfaces. As you can see in my case, I have on my laptop the IDT High Definition Audio Codec, uh, a virtual audio device, and then my Behringer FCA1616 and my AudioBox 1818 VSL. To enable the devices that you want to uh, combine together, you can click and use the highlight button to enable them and to select them. And if you want to individually select each input and output of each of the audio interface, you can click on the plus sign and that will open up, can manually select each input and output. Now going into, back into our song setup in Studio One Professional, you can see my inputs displayed, I can have up to 16 inputs. And 1 to 8 are my FCA1616, and 9 to 16 is my AudioBox1818 VSL. And I can create any number of virtual inputs in the matrix, so that I can select them and have, you know, up to 16 tracks simultaneously recording the audio. And looking at the outputs, as you can see, I have 16 outputs because my FCA1616 supports up to eight outputs or, two st uh, or four stereo pairs. And then the same thing with my AudioBox 1818 VSL. As you can see, I have another eight outputs as well or four pairs. Now, I have actually physically tested and I was able to record 16 tracks for up to 30 minutes or more in Studio One without any issues of uh, any audio problems or degradation 
or any noise and so on. So it works quite well. Here is another example in Traction 5. Again, as you can see in the settings, I have selected the ASIO device type and ASIO for all as my device. And as you can see, my 16 inputs from FCA 16, 16 and audio box all appear in the channel input setup. And again, when I look at the outputs, I have eight pair of outputs or uh, eight stereo outputs that I can use in traction. Well, I hope my explanation was helpful. Now you know how you can use whatever gear you have to expand your number of inputs to be able to capture more microphones, more inputs, more instruments as you're recording uh, maybe a live band or if you you know, need more microphones. So um, if it was helpful, give me the thumbs up. That way I know it was uh, useful for you. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That way you'll be kept up to date with any new information, any new video I upload to my channel. And here is my bass guitar. I just purchased it today. Um, it, was, it was a bargain. I couldn't let it go. It was $100. You know, usually bass guitars, even secondhand, unknown brands, they're about three, four, five hundred dollars. This was a bargain, and I purchased it um, for hundred dollars. Yes, I don't know how to play the bass guitar um, or or a guitar, but it's not about knowing how to play it, but it's about learning how to play it. So I'm going to challenge myself to play a, a bass guitar, so that in my future recordings. I will actually have a live guitar being played rather than rely on my keyboard uh, Korg PA3X arranger to play the guitar. You know, uh, so that it has more dynamic, so it has more feeling, it has imperfections, because that's what makes it different. Because my Korg arranger will play the bass guitar, you know, perfectly. It's too perfect. So I want to learn to play basic gu bass guitar so that I can have my physical input um, into my recording music, have some imperfections in there and hopefully improve upon it. And I hope you take these sort of challenges as well because um, you need to challenge yourself to improve and get better and enjoy it, you know. I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy this um, four strings you know, um, yeah, so uh, till next time, I hopefully I'll play some notes for you. As always, enjoy making great music. Till next time, cheerio.